Hello and welcome to another system control tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be continuing on with our CSS HTML uh, website. So in a previous tutorial we took PSD, exported the JPEGs or PNGs into a folder in which we are calling from CSS and HTML to present it as a functional renderable website. So in this third part of this tutorial uh, we're going to go ahead and be going over how to align everything uh, correctly and position it correctly so let's go ahead and continue on if you haven't seen part one or part two go ahead and go back I'm gonna have links on this video for you to go back so go ahead and click them watch those first then continue on to this video okay let's go ahead and get started so the first thing you need to do is bring up the web page in your te text editor sublime dreamweaver whatever you're using once you have it open, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so, first thing we're going to do is make a wrapper around everything. So, we're going to make a div id equals quotations, but in close the greater than sign. Make another div at the bottom, or close the div, I should say. Okay, so id we'll call it wrap, and we'll go ahead and make a, a, a class for it. So pound sign defines it as an ID and we'll call it wrap and needs a reference back to this ID so it needs to be spelled exactly the same we have our braces now inside our braces we write the settings for wrap so the settings should be uh, define a width first a thousand and one pixels you know, for our canvas and Adobe Photoshop so a thousand and one pixels and we'll go ahead and have a margin left and do auto what this is doing is centering your page. Margin right, auto. This is an older trick, uh, just simple, just to center your page. There's a lot better ways, but a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and just keep simple and keep repetitive so you guys get this, this down, uh, the simplicity of the div IDs. Okay, so we have our, our wrap. It's saying it's a div by a, or sorry, it's saying it's an ID by saying pound. Then we have pound, and then we have the reference name, which is wrap, which is down here. So same thing down here. We have ID equals, and then quotations, we have wrap. So all reference back back to each other. If we went ahead and saved this and went back to our browser, refreshed, it's going to be in the center. If I am to downsize this width-wise, you can see it. it's pretty much uh, a liquid layout as far as the left and right side. Um, so, so far, so good. The next step is we need to give um, some settings to our body. So we're going to go ahead and write body. Okay, so we have body, and then within the body, we're going to give it a margin of zero pixels and a padding of zero pixels. Let's go ahead and save. And then you're going to see this top uh, spacing between the banner and the very top of the browser is going to disappear because we no longer have any padding or any margin. Uh, within the body. So next step is we're going to turn this, uh, as I said in the end of the tutorial, uh, last tutorial part two, is that we need to make this instead of an image, a background image. So right now it's just displaying an image, in which that was my fault, but I'll go ahead and show you guys how to fix that. Let's go ahead and delete this out of here and write something in it. I'll say something here. Okay, so we have something there. So I'm going to go ahead and save it just so you guys can see. So this background is going to actually disappear because we took off the image and we just replaced it with text. Okay, so awesome. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the content. And this is the content div. That's why I'm referencing it. So this is content. And I'm looking for content in the style sheet, which I did find. And I'm going to write background hyphen image. And then I'm going to have a URL. And then I'm going to have our parentheses and then single quotations. And then I have my reference location so this is the source of it this would be forward slash content dot png and I'm gonna make sure it doesn't repeat because we don't want the background to repeat on this one so no repeat and we're gonna go ahead and define the width and the height but the first thing we need to do is see what those dimensions are so we go to our uh, Adobe Photoshop open up that particular image alone and once you have the image open you can do control alt I and it'll bring up the dimensions uh, there's a lot of different ways you can determine the dimensions of an image. This is just the way I do it. Um, I believe you can also right click on it, go under properties, and you'll see 
uh, dimensions of the image itself. So if you don't have uh, Adobe Photoshop and you're trying to do this tutorial, highly suggest uh, getting Adobe Photoshop first of all. Second of all, you could use the properties um, for the image if need be. Okay, so we have uh, 853 for width and 449 for height. So let's go ahead and define that. So we have 853 for width and 449 for height. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it and see how it displays out. Perfect. So it looks like the text isn't inside the box, but it is. It's just because it's, it has a gradient style to the content area, so it's blending in with the white, but it, it actually is inside. So what we're going to do is within the content, we're going to uh, content class, we're going to go ahead and put padding and we'll put 12 pixels. Why are we doing padding? Well, basically we're doing padding because we want the actual uh, text or whatever's within this div to be pushed away from the sides 12 pixels. Um, the way I did it, I wrote it as padding colon 12 pixels. So the way the browser renders it is it thinks, okay, uh, they want everything to be rent, uh, taken from the left, the top, the bottom, the right as 12 pixels away. If you want to do individuals, you can say, uh, you know, the top, the left side, the right side and bottom, right? Let's say you could do it like that, or you could write it out like this: padding. And we'll say left, and then you could say 12 pixels. That would just be the left side. This reference everything in one line, but just for simplicity, I'm not going to show you that way uh, for the beginners' tutorials. But once we, you guys, start understanding everything and get more comfortable with the div IDs, we'll move on to other things like classes, unordered list for the navigation, stuff like that. But for now, let's just keep it simple. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the navigation, and I'm going to write another div. So I'm going to have div, and then ID equals your quotations, and then close the greater than sign. And then remember, whatever we're wrapping in between the div, we need to put the, the end of this div somewhere around whatever I want to wrap. So I want to wrap this whole navigation, not the nav, nav div. I want to wrap the stuff within the nav navigation uh, div. So I'm going to go ahead and close it here, and then I have the div ID, and what we'll, we'll call this is we'll just call it buttons. So then down into back into our style sheet, we'll make another class. Uh, it is an ID, and it is called buttons. So the way we initiate an ID within our style sheet is a pound sign, and then we'll have buttons. Then we'll do our braces like always, and we'll go ahead and say padding six pixels. So now there should be padding from the top left bottom right side so it, it did it did push it so awesome so now it's a little bit aligned if I think we should push it down just a little bit more from everywhere so let's go ahead and do eight pixels and that's better okay so now we have our content redone we have our content within our content box we have um, our logo up here in which needs to be moved now so let's go ahead and move that down so this is our logo. Uh, it's here. It is an actual image. So let's go ahead and just leave an actual image rather than make it a background, which we could do, but let's not do that. So we're going to go ahead and make make it a position, and then absolute. Now the reason why we're doing that is just because we're going to have we we already have the div on top of another div, which is it works perfectly fine. But just to be safe, we're going to make it absolute so we can move it anywhere we want. So. We have absolute, and we're going to do margin from the top. That's what we'll do first. We'll say 50 pixels, and we'll save it and just see what it looks like. Looks like it's actually on the money. So let's go ahead and move it from the left side. So the way we can do that is just margin hyphen left, and we'll do 45 pixels. See how that looks. Refresh it, and that looks fine. So let's go ahead and leave it like that. So we went ahead and positioned our logo, um, or in this case, my website name to the position that I want. Uh, next thing we'll do is go ahead and center this content box. It is pushed to the left. Let's go ahead and center it. So the way we'll do that is head to, we'll look down here and say okay, our div ID is content so now we need to go back to our style sheet and reference to that. So this is the content. Awesome, we found it. So now we need to move from the left side. So the way we do that is margin 
hyphen left and we'll move from the left side by doing just margin hyphen left and we'll say 65 pixels we save it and there we go so that's maybe a little too much maybe go down to 60 pixels just to make sure it's eye centered okay so that looks better so now we have the content box centered we have our navigation pretty much um, aligned correctly we have our logo aligned to our liking we have the page itself aligned we also took away the margin and padding from the top the left and the bottom side so there's no space down here, no space up there. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is we want to move this navigation up, this nav bar up on top of this banner. So the way we could do that is by using Z index and also the position absolute. So Z index is the stacking of layers. So think in Photoshop how we have our layers panel on the right side. So it's, let's, let's say I made another layer. Well, let's say if this was in reference to a Z index, this would be a number higher. So Z index one. This would be, we'll say negative one, just to not have zero. So let's say negative one. So this is one negative one. So the one that's a higher number is going to be on top of another div with a lower Z index. So it's really simple. Uh, if you can think of it in the terms of Photoshop, then it's going to make things a lot easier on yourself and as far as understanding how that works. But let's go ahead and let's let's put it into action now. So the div is nav. So we reference from there, and we're gonna give it a position, and we're gonna say absolute, and we're gonna do z index. So z index will do will do five just to be safe. So this should be on top of. Okay, so it's on top of the content area, but we want it on top of the actual banner. So what we'll do is we just bring it up. So we're going to do a negative margin on this. So we'll do margin, hyphen top, negative, we'll say 20 pixels. That might be too much. No, nope, that looks fine. Let's go ahead and push it to the left some. See, there's some, some issue there. So margin left, and we'll do a negative 2. We'll do negative 4 pixels. Oh. Maybe three. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this down because we have our content pushing away off of the banner right now, not the navigation anymore. That's why it's under it. So we'll do uh, for our content, we'll do a margin top and we'll do it 35 pixels and see what that does for us. Perfect. So now we have our navigation on top of the banner. So now we have our website pretty much aligned correctly. And the next tutorial, I'll go ahead and show you how to change the background color um, of the actual page. Let's say we want it black. And we'll do a little bit more of sprucing up. Then maybe we can refactor some of our code just to make it a little bit cleaner and nicer. And maybe turn this into HTML5 layout so I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope it was uh, not too fast for you guys I was trying to keep it short but we're already in this um, a good amount of time so let's go ahead and break this up into another tutorial I appreciate it don't forget to subscribe and comment